Hi everyone, Richard here. I'm here to uh, test out a new lens which is the RF16mm against this uh, old lens, prime lens, these are both prime. This is the EF20mm uh, f2.8 USM. So the RF is uh, f2.8 as well, but it's a uh, STM uh, moto. But uh, we we'll want to test it out. But this one has uh, a bit of a clicking noise because it's using an old mechanism for autofocus, whereas this is quieter for video. But for photography, we can see the difference as well. Um, we'll show you in the photo and I'll do a block test. On. So let's get down to specs on the EF uh, 20mm f2.8. So it's from 2.8 until f22. Well, this is meant for EF and it's quite an old design. Uh, it has a 20mm which means it's 94 degrees field of view. But uh, what I like about this, this one doesn't distort much on the corners. We'll show you the uh, reference. As opposed to the new RF uh, 16mm which has very uh, large barrel distortion uh, towards the edges. So the EF20mm has a minimum focus of 25cm So the minimum focus distance of the 16mm is only 13cm So it's much nearer, this 25 and this 13 And we compare the field of view because the 16mm has a 106 degree field of view So it's much uh, wider field view compared to this one And the maximum uh, magnification and Close up when you use this one is 0.14 times. Uh, this one is 0.26 times. So the RF has nine elements in seven groups, and I have uh, seven rounded plates. Whereas the EF 20mm has 11 elements in nine groups, but it only has uh, five rounded plates. So the bokeh wouldn't be as uh, round as this. So that would be a big difference uh, between these two is the weight and front element size. So the RF uh, has a 43mm diameter filter size. So it's very very small. Uh, it's hard to get filters for that as well. You need to add on to the adapter. While it only weighs uh, 165 grams so it's super light right so if you go mount it on the body and then you do do blogging it's very light and it's wide enough and you can enable enhanced stabilization on the r5 body so you get better stabilization while getting enough uh, field of view whereas the ef carries a 72 mm uh, diameter filter size so it's easier to find and but the weight is significantly higher is 405 grams versus 165 so 405 165 but there is another catch to using the EF is because you will need to add on the EF to RF uh, adapter which means you see you need to add this on and it weighs a bit more so it weighs a bit more after adding it on not only that the uh, length is pretty significantly <laughs> taller look at that so it's like practically double the length and it's much heavier so we will try out this both uh, on the R5 you can see the distance this looks like that long is double the length and if you put the RF it's only that short so the weight is much heavier and if you're working with this it's a bit heavier right um, and as opposed to the RF 16mm but the difference is I will show you uh, I actually prefer the lens on the 20mm because that's very minimal distortion Right, compared to the 16mm. So we have a look and I'll do a vlogging test on this and as well as some shots 
which I will show you the efficiency of this 16mm in terms of when you shoot raw. When you shoot JPEG, you don't see much of the difference, but when you shoot raw, you see the difference between this EF 20mm and the 16mm. What is the EF 20mm f2.8? I have fixed the aperture to f2.8 so that you can see what's the blur light behind but I have to bump up the shutter speed to 640 and uh, ISO is auto but uh, it won't adjust uh, that well in the dark area because it's not full auto and uh, yeah, you can see the adjustment is so on that can't get me on the dark areas when I'm going through but I just want to see how the field of view looks like with the 20mm and how the stabilization is. This is with the uh, IBIS as well as the digital IS on. This is not enhanced stabilization, it's just standard digital uh, IS and the IBIS together. So that's how it looks like, and then this is how it adjusts the lighting as it's tracking my eye as well so it's not bad for that so we'll switch over to the 16mm you can see what's the difference after this but uh, before that I will turn off the IS and you can see just the lens stabilization uh, sorry and, and you can see just the IB stabilization no, there's no lens stabilization for this so we'll switch to just the IB alright now this is the EF20mm f2.8 with the just the IB st stabilization on no IS so that's how it looks like the view field of view is wider now and uh, but I would presume it will be more shakier because there's no digital IS uh, assisting it so I'm not testing out the enhanced stabilization because there's no point we just want to see the Field of view in terms of that. If we do do enhance, it, def it definitely will crop in and uh, it will work well on the 16mm but not on this 20mm because the, the, the crop will be too tight. So now it's 20mm and we'll switch over to the 16mm. So as you can see, this is the 16mm RF f2.8. This is the RF lens with the 16mm. So I'm running this on just the IBIS, no digital IS yet, I'll turn it on later and again it's f2.8 and uh, you can't get me in the dark as the face will be but it's still tracking my eye, it's amazing uh, so that's how it looks like for the 16, it's much wider, it's, it's much better for vlogging so if you need to vlog, the 16mm is great for vlogging because it's wide enough and then at the same time, it's lighter, so it's not as heavy. So now I'll switch over to the digital IS and as well as the IBIS. So now this is 16mm RF lens with the digital IS as well as IBIS enabled. So you can see the field of view is much tighter, but uh, it looks great on that and then the stabilization should be better at the ISO catch up. So the stabilization would be better with the IS on uh, and if you do the enhanced IS on this it will come down to the 20mm uh, field of view. So from 16 you will get down to about 20mm which is what the EF is providing uh, with the stabilization in enhanced mode but this is good enough for vlogging and uh, that's the good thing about the 16mm RF version that even with the stabilization you get enough uh, field of view so you don't have you can hold it up further you can hold it up closer it's still not a problem and the weight is way much uh, better than on the EF but in terms of uh, photography side we shall test it out now and you can see the difference between the two if you need to do photography and you can see what's the difference between the EF20mm as well as the 16mm. 
So you can see this is currently shooting at JPEG. Uh, so the line all seems to be, let's put it as close as possible to the street center here. Now we will focus on that center and the outside. This is as close as possible uh, that you can see in the screen. And you can see the lines are pretty much straight in JPEG. And then now I'm going to switch it over to shoot uh, RAW as well. So I'll shoot RAW and JPEG. But uh, that's the problem when you shoot RAW. You can see in RAW format, I will show you that there is a lot of distortion. But the correction will be applied on the JPEG as well. I can't turn off the distortion correction, it's auto enable uh, for the RF 16mm but we'll see in the RAW, I'll show how the RAW looks like it will be very distorted, the barrels, you can see all the sides will be distorted and there will be a lot of vignetting if you shoot this in RAW so we'll take a few more shots and we'll switch over to the EF20mm EF20mm, you can see the angle field of view is much tighter uh, but we can compare it with the RAW, you can see it will be less distortion and uh, I technically prefer this uh, in terms of uh, photography whereas I find the 16mm a bit over distorted towards the edge it gets stretched all your hands and legs, feet, nose if you happen to stand at the side all get stretched so you don't look uh, appealing with the 16mm so it would be great for just landscape but not not to say uh, uh, good for if you're taking a picture of people so the 16mm uh, doesn't look so well if you're taking a picture of people so there you have it, uh, just a quick uh, look at this comparison between the RF 16mm and the EF 20mm, both equally uh, capable, both uh, 2.8 and uh, both are relatively sharp. So the RF is a bit sharper but it's only in the center towards the side you get a distortion whereas this is overall uh, quite sharp. Uh, if you stop it down from f2.8 to f4 onwards so, but this one EF20mm has less distortion but it's not so good for vlogging in terms of but uh, in terms of photography I technically prefer this uh, EF20mm uh, as it has less distortion towards the sides and uh, it's a very sharp lens as well but, uh, it looks more organic on this 20mm and this looks really um, sharp and contrasty in the digital look. Uh, this tends to look more natural. So that's it, a uh, quick look at these two. Hope you like the comparison and uh, do give me a thumbs up if you like the review and subscribe. Uh, click on my description if you like to see any uh, uh, comparts the lens that I buy. And for the, the, I have some links to the Lazada shop. Uh, there's affiliate links. If you do click them, uh, even if you don't buy anything, do click them because it does help with the channel uh, in terms of uh, uh, Google Ads. So do help me out. And if you like the video, do share it. And then uh, if you really need to get the RM 16mm, uh, there's a link below. You can click on it and get it from the Lazada shop. So thanks everyone. Have a nice day.